Um, so can you just tell me your name and um, a little about, bit about what you're doing here? Uh, my name is Clara Vondrich. I'm a member of 350 NYC. We are a group committed to um, maintaining a stable climate for future generations. And um, we're here today because um, the endowments around the world, institutional investments, have sin significant proportions of fossil fuels like coal, gas, and um, oil that we know are heating the earth. So what we're asking um, folks like Comptroller DiNapoli, who controls New York State's pension funds, to divest those funds of all their coal, oil, and gas holdings because we feel it's unethical for him to be invested, and indeed our, our state's workers, since it's their pension funds, to be invested in those very same fuels that are polluting the earth for ourselves and future generations. Um, what would you say to people who might ask um, if the comptroller wasn't investing in those fossil fuels, then someone else would soup in and invest in them anyway, so it might as well go to the state or to people with pension funds? That's a really great question. Um, I'm not a financial expert, but I do understand that because pension funds are such a massive investor, they're very important to the fossil fuel companies. Um, basically, the fossil fuel companies can um, get funds at a lower rate of borrowing, let's say. And so when big pension funds like New York State divest, it actually does have a market impact. It becomes that much harder for fossil fuel companies to get um, shareholders because the price of the capital goes up. So it's actually not as fungible as some people say. And um, what about people who say that um, if, it's not, if it's not natural gas or fossil fuels, then we don't really have any other alternatives right now? That's another wonderful question. There are experts around the world, and I'll just name two, um, Amory Lovins at the Rocky Mountain Institute and Mark Jacobson of Stanford University. They've done very careful analyses of current technologies, and they've found that much of our energy today, our energy needs in the U.S., can be met with renewable sources like wind, water, and sun, provided that we also use what's called sometimes the fourth fuel, which is efficiency. Energy efficiency measures, whether it's retrofitting your home or making clean energy upgrades um, throughout office commercial space, they can make a huge difference. Not to mention, there's a lot of line loss on our transmission grid today that could be vastly improved. So the combination of energy efficiency, improvements to our grid, and renewable sources could actually meet the vast proportion of our energy needs today. But we're missing the political will. And um, how long do you think it would take? Where is New York right now as far as energy efficiency goes and kind of turning over a new leaf? Um, New York has always been a leader in energy efficiency and other measures. Um, it's interesting because 80% of our energy use in New York City actually comes from buildings because we are a very pedestrian friendly city. We have great mass transit. So it's not cars that you'll find in a lot of locales. There's an incredible organization that I commend to everybody to check out. It's called the New York City Energy Efficiency Corporation. They're a quasi-public group that works to provide financing solutions so that you and me, as well as building owners around the city, can make those clean energy upgrades at low cost. We all know that energy efficiency pays for itself over a few years, but people don't often have the upfront cash to make the improvements. So what NYSEEC, which is the acronym does, they actually serve as a uh, climate, uh, clean energy financing solution center. So bring them your problem, bring them your project, and they will help you get the financing you need and overcome those upfront cost barriers. Um, if you could sit down and speak with the comptroller personally, what would you say to him? Comptroller DiNapoli, this is a win-win for the people of New York State. We're asking you to divest the pension from, from fossil fuels, both for moral, ethical, and financial reasons. It's, it's wrong to profit from the very companies that are causing the heating of the earth, and we know that the science says that within 15 years we'll cross tipping points that may be irreversible. But it's not just an ethical issue, there's a clear financial imperative as well. There have been a lot of analyses that have showed that it's a false choice between profits and remaining invested in fossil fuels. A lot of studies like the Aperio Group have concluded that divestment does not have does not have significant impacts on one's portfolio. And really, the clean energy technologies that are coming up are becoming more and more successful. Tesla is an example of a company who's 
stocks have just gone through the roof. They went from $30 um, a share to I think around $250 today. Um, and so the idea that we have to choose between our values and our profits is a myth that we need to eradicate. And Comptroller DiNapoli, you're smarter than that. You know this choice is a false one. Divest today and reinvest in the clean energy future. Are you with the Green Party or are you out here just on part of CUNY? I'm actually a member of 350NYC. We're the local affiliate of the national group, 350.org. Um, 350.org is a group committed to um, maintaining 350 parts per million of carbon in the atmosphere because many scientists like Jim Hansen say that's the safe threshold um, that we can be sure we won't lock in the kind of tipping points that folks suggest that will almost guarantee the floods, the fires, the droughts, and all the extreme weather events and um, associated impacts like uh, you know, starvation and resource scarcity and water issues that we know could be cataclysmic for this planet. So 350NYC is the New York City-based chapter of that national organization. And do you feel like enough New Yorkers are concerned about this issue? New York tends to be a very progressive state, and um, when you poll New Yorkers, they, they put climate um, higher than the rest of the country. That said, um, nationally, we still have a very significant problem because, um, especially in the context of the economic downturn, climate and environment generally doesn't rise to the top. In fact, it tends to be all, always at the bottom of the list. So we have significant challenges. New Yorkers are traditionally way more progressive than their national counterparts, and therefore they have a real opportunity to continue that tradition of leadership on this particular issue. Thank you. That was a great interview. Thank you so much.